Um, I haven't read the book yet, but I plan to. Um, I just was wondering how long um, it took you to write the book. Midnight took me six years. Wow. You know, I mean, it's, um, it's not a huge book, but I'm a slow writer. <laughs> <laughs> but a good one. Thank you. <laughs> There's a question over here. Well, I just wanted to ask this question, which isn't really to you, but to the library, uh, because I, this is the first time I've participated in this event. But how did you make your selection? Oh, well. Oh, pass it on back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's uh, an internal committee in the library, and I sit on it, and uh, we pick a book, uh, we like it to be Canadian, uh, and the reason we chose Judy's book was for many reasons. One, it was beautifully written. We look for something that's beautifully written, obviously. Uh, we look for something that we think will be accessible, that is to say, uh, teenagers can read it, and I'm very pleased to say 14 high school classes are reading this book and studying it. Uh, it also had a main character that was uh, incredibly appealing. It had themes that were easy to program around in a city like ours, as has been mentioned. What better theme than the theme of uh, immigration, whether it's true immigration in the sense that you're from somewhere else, or if it's the kind of feeling that Judy talked about, having your face pressed against the glass. I think everybody can feel uh, very on side with that. Judy herself is a wonderful talker, a wonderful performer. She was able to to um, do things with us. So all in all, it just seemed like a a great choice, uh, and uh, we knew that it would be a great partnership if we if we um, were able to get Judy. And um, so that's how we chose the book. Good choice. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> I really did, but I can get some credit, so I'm happy. Um, since the second book was brought up, and so some people can get to know you better as an author, could you say a few words about your short stories? Oh, my short stories, um, well, they came out in 97, and uh, they, they're a collection of of stories that take place around laundries and restaurants, and some of them are set in Toronto, some of them are set in small towns. A lot of them are mother-daughter stories, and there are there are a few stories in there that, that 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 have quite a twist in them too as well, and some of them I like to think are quite funny. Probably um, in those stories, I think I probably um, found more humor than I have in um, recent work. More? One more question. Because I didn't find her the least likable character. Okay. Um, oh, this is great. Well, I, I, hated the, I hated the mean girl more than I hated Su Jen's mother. I think she had a very difficult um, situation in which she came to. And I think the decisions that she made ultimately were for the benefit of her daughter and the life her daughter would have. And I felt at the end that maybe she would have a better um, situation than she'd had throughout the whole novel that um, Su Jen's parents and Su Jen would um, find a, a place where there was a little more peace in their life than they had throughout the story that we read. This is a writer's dream when people have different feelings about different people in the book because that tells me I, I that they're coming to, say, to life. Didn't you find her selfish? You know, putting her own pleasure above her family when they had sacrificed so much? Well, she had little choice. I don't know. Well, you seem. <laughs> sorry. I did feel sorry for her at the end. I did. She was trapped. Anybody else? Uh, maybe this is a question to you as a writer. After, after learning that you spent six years uh, putting the story together and maybe putting them down, uh, and, and uh, I guess we're looking now at how this book would transform our month of April and maybe transform other people's lives, how did the book transform you? Not after it's been published, but while you were writing it. While I was writing it, well, 
What happens to me? How did it transform me as... Well, I, I, I know that while I was writing the book, I think probably for the last year, especially when I was doing rewrites and I was into major rewrites, I was physically transformed. Um, I think that if I had lived by myself, if I lived alone, I would never have washed. <laughs> I, uh, I remember getting up in the morning and I remember putting on this coral colored house coat which my daughter had discarded at age nine and I decided that there was still wear in it and I think you know I, I was traipsing around in that and I wore a um, and I wore a little fleecy vest on top of that house coat and I wore um, I wore um, these track pants underneath my nightie so and, and, and I wore very large furry slippers. So I, I, I was physically transformed. As, as, as a matter of fact, my husband used to say to me that I looked like somebody running around in the hills of Afghanistan because I had this little vest on and I looked like I was a member of the Mujahideen. And, and so I, I think there was a definite physical transformation because I just kind of was so um, engrossed in my work and I found that when I woke up first thing in the morning I would be thinking about the people in my book and when I went to bed at night the last thing I would be thinking about would be the people in my book and if it weren't for the fact that I had a family um, I, I truly think that I would have spent a year eating out of a can but, as it was, I always managed, and, and this is truly to my credit, I always managed to be showered and dressed by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> because I would start working almost from the time I got up, and, and this was to do with rewrites. Before that, my house was very clean. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thanks to everyone for coming out tonight once again to help kick off Toronto, keep Toronto reading. Judy's going to be signing books in a moment, but now we're going to end the evening with another short performance from Starlight Opera. <laughs>